How's it going everybody and welcome to Cub Fans Minecraft. Today we're taking a look at the first 1.5 snapshot, also known as 13W01A. So guys, there is some major, major redstone changes coming and I'm very, very excited about it. So let's go ahead and get started taking a look at this week's snapshot. Alright everybody, so we're starting off this week in the nether because there is new nether ore, which you can see here. And if we just mine a bit of it... You'll see we get some nether quartz. And there is a use for this nether quartz. Let's just go ahead and head back to the overworld and check out what it is. Okay, so then if we combine our nether quartz in the center here with some wood slabs and our glass, we see the first new block we've got, and that is the daylight sensor. So the daylight sensor does exactly what the name implies. It outputs a redstone signal whenever it detects daylight. Uh, so the sun is just about right overhead now. But if I go ahead and change the time, take a look at these lamps here. Uh, nearly all of them are lit up now, but if I change the time, say time set zero, so it's early morning, then the output of the daylight sensor changes and it only line, lights up the first six repeaters here. And as the sun rises, gets higher in the sky, the daylight sensor detects that and outputs uh, a longer signal, a more powerful signal. So that's a pretty cool block there. And one really great use of the daylight detector is to turn your lights on automatically at night if you use a simple knock gate to invert the signal. And once we change it back to day, you'll see all of the lights will then go off. And there you go. Pretty cool. And Nether Quartz also has another use for the redstone comparator. So if we go ahead and place the Nether Quartz in the center, redstone torches around like that and then some stone like this we get this repeater looking thing called the redstone comparator and I'll show you what this does in just one second okay everybody so the redstone comparator let's go ahead and put that down there this is what it looks like uh, for the purposes of this demonstration I've called this backside with the, the two towers here side A and this side with nothing here uh, side B so, uh, if we go ahead and flick the side A lever only and put a redstone signal through the back of this, um, then the only thing that happens is the redstone signal goes right through it, uh, and it acts uh, just like if it, there was just a piece of redstone wire there, uh, and it comes out to the normal 15 blocks. But, if we go ahead and flick this lever on side B, uh, thus putting a redstone signal into the side of it, you'll see that the lamps all turned off so if you receive a signal from side B you can turn off uh, the input from side A so to speak and next you can if you add another redstone comparator to the one you have and then right click the first one so that that little uh, torch on the output side of the comparator pops up you can create a sort of subtraction system so here we have one, two, three, four redstone leading into this comparator here. And on this side, from this lever, we have two. Um, so if I flick this, it turns off the lamps because there's two inputs here. And you're subtracting side A, so two minus four will be negative two, so it doesn't output anything. But if we turn this off and turn on this lever, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces of redstone here and only four on this side. So if we flick this lever, it'll subtract this side B input length, which is seven, from the side A input length, which is four, and it should light up one, two, three. So this, these two lamps here will light up, and also this one here will light up. So let's see if that's the case. Flick it, and there we go. It comes out one, two, three blocks. So we now have an easy way to do subtraction as well, and I'm sure all the people that are using redstone to build computers and uh, awesome doors and things like that are going to put this to some pretty awesome use. Alright, and our next item is the long-awaited redstone block. And it is crafted just as easy you'd expect with just nine pieces of redstone. And you get a block of redstone. And what this does it, is it provides a redstone signal, uh, the normal 15 block length, in the form of a block and it's cool about that you can use pistons to control it so this opens up a lot of possibilities uh, greatly modifies things like T flip-flops 
and a whole bunch of other redstone circuitry. So redstone block, I know a lot of people have been waiting for this for a long time, but it's finally in the game. Okay everybody, and there are also two new types of pressure plates this week. First of all, we have the gold pressure plate, called the weighted pressure plate light. And also an iron one, that's called the weighted pressure plate heavy. So let's go ahead and go over here and take a look at what we got here. Um, so if we get a stack of items and toss one on, you'll see that the pressure plate only outputs a signal strength of one, but if we add a few more, there's two, three, four, and then on the fifth one, on the fifth one on the light pressure plate, it'll uh, add another block of redstone signal strength. And if we keep piling it on, every four blocks that are added, you get another uh, redstone power signal strength added onto the signal. So that's the light pressure plate. Alright everybody, now for the heavy pressure plate. So if we throw an item on, you'll see it outputs a redstone signal strength of 1. And if we keep on piling items on, you'll see the signal strength remains at 1. And it will remain at 1 until we pile on 42 items. And once we add the 43rd item, the pressure plate activates. So you can have up to 42 items on this with a signal strength of 1, but once you add that 43rd one, it'll keep going. So this means you can hold up to about 10 stacks of items onto this pressure plate and have it detect uh, when 10 stacks get onto this thing. Alright everybody, our next item is the trapped chest. So to craft this, take a normal chest and put it in a crafting table with a tripwire hook to create a trapped chest. And what this does is it outputs a redstone signal, uh, one block in signal power whenever it's open. So I'll show you that now. We'll just make a little system here with the light to show that it does indeed output a redstone signal. So when I open it, the lamp comes on, close it, lamp goes off. So this is going to be really useful for traps and also for some really cool functionality within people's houses and storage rooms. Okay, there are also some cool inventory features in this snapshot. So first, if you grab a stack of items and you hold right mouse button, you can put one item into one slot. Uh, so this is useful for filling chests if you uh, just want to have one chest of one single item. And then if you want to get the item back, just simply double click and you get all your items put back into a nice neat stack. And then say you have items spread out through your, throughout your inventory like that, if you shift and double click, it'll take all of that item from your inventory and place it into the chest. Just like that. Another great feature this week is the ability to smelt nether rack. And if we smelt the nether rack up, we eventually get a single piece of nether brick. And we'll just wait for this to smelt up a little bit. Alright, and then once we have four nether brick, we can put it in a crafting table like so and get a actual block of nether brick. So finally a way to get nether bricks legitimately uh, without having to destroy a fortress. Alright everybody, so the next block we have is the work in progress block here, also known as the hopper. And if we place it on a chest, you can see it looks like that. It's like a little, little funnel shape down into the chest. And what the hopper does is it basically allocates different items and puts them into whatever inventory uh, you place the hopper on. So say if we throw these cobblestone into the hopper itself, you'll see that those blocks are now in the chest. And you can also open up this inventory on the hopper by right clicking it and you can place the items in there manually and they will slowly filter down into the chest. Uh, the hopper works on all of these blocks here, so it works on a minecart, brewing stand, Furnace minecart, regular chest, furnace, dispenser, uh, chest minecart, and the new trapped chests. So all these can now be used to do cool things like create sorting systems, uh, automatic brewing stands where it brews the potion for you, and different things like that. So that's pretty awesome. Alright everybody, you can also use the hoppers to transport items. And this can be either from like a mob grinder or just to like sort items. Uh, so we have a large chest of diamonds here, 
we go up top and throw our diamonds into the stream here. Just like so. We'll throw them all in there. What the heck? And then come down here. You'll see all the diamonds getting sorted in here. And there's our 10 diamonds there. They all get put in the right chest. And then you can uh, presumably connect other chests up to this. And uh, make sort of like a sorting system that way. So that's a pretty cool thing there. And I think that's going to be all for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. This has been Cub Fan. Goodbye.